everyone, and welcome to Taper Talk. Of course, I'm going to do a Trump video. I have to do at least one. This afternoon, I did uh, a little something on the Jeffrey Epstein case. I was uh, showed a clip from the uh, Eric Weinstein Portal podcast with Sam Harris. So anyway, of course, I have to do at least one Trump video. So Jim Acosta, all oh, right, nails uh, Trump on this, catches him, and, and you know, a, a lie. What is it? 15,621 lies and counting since Trump um, took office, right, in 16. Uh, so anyway, uh, by the way, I'm no longer using SaveFrom.net. I was going to stream Brian Tyler Cohen's uh, a clip of, from his show, um, but I'm not using that anymore. And I just want to make a point anyway. It's kind of easier. I'm just going to throw up the phone. I'm going to first show you Trump lying. Jim Acosta calling him on that, and then reasonable, sane people telling telling it how it really went down, okay? First, here's the lie from the liar-in-chief. Ready? Here we go. With empty cupboards, the last administration left us nothing. We started off with bad, broken tests and obsolete tests. What we've come up with between the Abbott laboratories, we have the five minutes. Did yeah. they test you today? They did test me. For, uh, I'm, now I feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm negative. You did the you did the five minute the I Abbott did the, test. The, the, the quick turn. What a it's fucking so sick of That's a brand. You know what? That's a brand new test that didn't exist eight weeks ago, uh, and now it's like the rage. Everybody wants that test. Uh, no, I think we've done. I think we've done a really great job. But the Obama administration, people from the Obama administration, would disagree on your assessment that the cupboards were bare. They, they said well, that there well, was equipment. Yeah, in, I know, Jim. Let, let me just say, it. I answer. You say broken test. It's a new virus. So how could the test be broken? We had a broken a test. Jim, we had broken tests. We had tests that were obsolete. We had tests that didn't take care of people. But here's what's very important. If you take a look at the swine flu, H1N1, or as Joe Biden would say N1H1, but it's actually wrong. He didn't even know the name. Okay, You got a H1 lot of balls, N1, asshole. The swine flu. The Obama administration was a disaster. And they did polling on how did they do. And their polls were so negative, so bad. They did a very poor lies. job. I'll and they did a poor job on a lot of things. They did a poor job on our military. They did a poor job on oh, our okay. ammunition. When I got here, we had no ammunition. Yeah. Just, just like we just had no nonsense. ammunition, we had Gibberish. very little medical too. So I think when you ask, how did we do? And I have to say it because the news is so fake and so corrupt. Well, is it? Uh, I think we did a spectacular job. I'm not even referring to me. I'm referring to all of these people, including your people who have been working with my people so closely. Finally, Trump was called out for his constant, constant claim that he inherited broken tests from an administration that hasn't been in office for nearly... Okay, now here's the voice of reason, this young man, Brian Tyler Cohen, Okay. You heard the first couple of minutes, big fat lie, many lies, Jim Acosta calling him out. And here's actually the truth. Go, Brian. Only four years for a virus that did not exist until only a few months ago. So even if Obama did create a coronavirus test, chances are that it probably wouldn't work too well, considering he didn't know what he'd be creating the test for. And it's telling exactly. that Trump's response is, and I quote, we had broken tests, we had tests that were obsolete, we had tests that didn't take care of people. What with the fact that none of those sentences actually means anything. <laughs> I don't know who exactly. needs to hear this, but you cannot inherit obsolete tests from a previous administration for a virus that came into existence several years after they were exactly. out of office. It's just nonsense. What this is, is just a smattering of meaningless words it's falling totally. out of Trump's mouth intended to blame Obama. And the but when he's forced to actually suck it elaborate, up. well, clearly he can't. Instead, Trump Swallow pivots it, back to the Obama sinker. administration's handling of H1N1, where Trump claims that he did a poor job. Only under Obama, the U.S. had 12,469 H1N1 deaths during the entire year from April 2009 to April 2010. In only eight weeks, the U.S. has had over 61,000 deaths of coronavirus. Yep. And expanding on These that, the, the United States has about 62,000 coronavirus deaths, while the world has 231,000. That means that the U.S. has 27% of the world's coronavirus deaths. But under Obama, the U.S. had 12,469 H1N1 deaths, while the world had between 151,000 and 575,000, meaning the U.S. had between 2% and 8% of the world's H1N1 deaths. So if Trump thinks that the administration that had five times less deaths 
and as low as 2% of the world's deaths versus 27% is poor, then I'd love to know on what planet <laughs> Trump <laughs> thinks he's actually yeah. done a better job. Yeah. Trump then claims that there was polling on the Obama administration's handling of H1N1, which is a strange thing for Trump to bring up, considering there was polling on Obama's handling of H1N1, and it far exceeds Trump's polling on coronavirus. Yep. In 2009, Gallup held two polls, the average of which showed that 67% of respondents were very confident or somewhat confident in the federal government its ability to handle the H1N1 outbreak. But for Trump, according to 538's aggregate of all polls since March, only 43% of Americans trust him at least somewhat to handle the coronavirus, while 53% only trust him a little bit or not at all. In other words, and I hope you're sitting down for this, Trump was lying. The truth is that <laughs> this right, is I'll just like... an excuse to cover yeah, okay. for the fact that the Trump administration has dropped the ball with regard to testing. And so rather than own the fact that he's the president of the United States and he's responsible for what happens, Trump would rather just blame Obama for coronavirus because it's easier. And just hope that no one realizes that Obama hasn't been president for almost four years. Yeah, exactly. In reality, experts have been saying for weeks that the United States needs to be testing 500,000 to 700,000 people per day more than three times what we're doing right now. But since day one of the outbreak, Trump hasn't worked to ramp up our testing infrastructure, focusing instead on patting himself on the back for yeah. months for enacting a half-baked travel ban all the way back in January. Exactly. That still managed to let 40,000 people enter exactly. the U.S. from China, and then just hawking miracle cures like hydroxychloroquine and injecting disinfectant. Yeah. Okay, let me pause. Okay, yeah, I mean, he, the the one thing the travel ban, and as he said, 40,000 people got in any way. And, um, you know, I'm listening listening to the Joe Rogan podcast and they're just discussing uh who's this guest Jesse May I don't know but but it's like the guy just, just some duh he doesn't care he doesn't care all he cares about he's fighting on in the middle of a pandemic and he's fighting the only thing he cares about is, is his ego his stupid ego his narcissism trying to go after the haters it's awful it's goddamn awful and enough already okay Brian great job good friends good books and a sleepy Conscience, peace, love, and understanding here on Table Talk.